Hi everyone, my name is Chloe Sharman and I'll be presenting today on the topic of allergies, prevalence, severity, and more. This is for Health 301 by Dr. Jen. Lesson objectives and purpose. Our first objective is to learn what allergies are and why they happen. Second, discuss risk factors, severity, and prevention. Third, find out why allergy prevalence is increasing. The purpose of this lesson is to broaden knowledge about the increase of allergies and to be more informed of the associated dangers. So what are allergies? Allergies occur when your immune system reacts to a foreign substance. Histamine causes the reaction. This is coming from the Mayo Clinic. When you have allergies, your immune system makes antibodies that identify an allergen as harmful, even though it isn't, also from the Mayo Clinic. So you can be allergic to things such as pet dander, food, an insect bite, or sting, pollen, drugs. Over here, we have a chart showing what you can be allergic to if it comes to skin contact, ingestion, injection, or inhalation. So everyone can have allergies, even animals. There are adult onset allergies. You can get them as a child. You can be born with them. It all really depends. You are more at risk if you have asthma, if you're a child, have a family history, you're very stressed, or if you smoke or are around someone who smokes. So the severity of reactions can differ. It all really depends on what you're allergic to and the amount that your body creates histamine. So, immune responses can be mild from a coughing or a runny nose to life-threatening reactions known as anaphylaxis. This comes from Johns Hopkins. A mild reaction is going to have stuff like a runny nose, cough, itching, watery eyes, hives, and a rash, whereas a severe reaction of anaphylaxis would be more severe symptoms such as a throat swelling, a tongue swelling, you can't breathe, you're dizzy, and even if you have abnormal heart rate. Prevention methods. A lot of people think that you're just born with allergies and there's no way to prevent them. That's not entirely true. So with pet dander, research seems to show that if you have early exposure to animals such as cats and dogs, it actually protects the child from developing these diseases. So someone who grows up with pets is a lot less likely to have allergies to them. For food allergies, a lot of people believe that if you restrict a baby from having a certain food, then it'll protect them, but it's actually the opposite. If you introduce these foods early, such as eggs, dairy, peanuts, fish, and shellfish, it can actually help the child be more immune to allergenic foods. So prevalence, cases on the rise. Why are cases on the rise? All of these theories come from the American Academy of Allergy, Asthma, and Immunology. So vitamin D deficiency theory. This says that essential vitamin D isn't being received in young children, so their lungs aren't developing the way they should. This causes more of a risk for asthma and uh, associated allergies with asthma. Uh, it's the same kind of thing for increased obesity. Kids don't really go outside as much. They're not exercising as much, they're eating worse foods, so that rises a rate for chronic diseases, which also includes asthma. Increased use of antibiotics. Research indicates that increased use of certain medications can contribute to asthma, so that's if you don't take antibiotics correctly or you have to take them a lot. And the hygiene hypothesis states that living conditions in much of the world now are a lot cleaner than they used to be, so kids aren't being exposed to germs that they need to be exposed to to be protected from some of these allergens. So now I have a test your knowledge slide, and pause the video and write down your answers. You may play the video once you've answered all questions. So first question, which of these is not a hypothesis as to why these are increasing cases of allergies? If you answered A, you're correct. It's vitamin D, not vitamin C. Two, what it was an objective of this lesson? If you look back at the lesson slide, you'll see that if you discuss severity or discuss the prevalence or just in general learn what allergies were, then that's correct. True or false, anaphylaxis is not a life-threatening reaction to allergen. That is false. And fill in the blank. Research seems to show that early exposure to animals may actually protect children from developing diseases. And finally, these are my references. At the bottom, I have more information that you can check out if you'd like to know more about allergies. Thank you.